Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Mouse and keyboard support on consoles has been both a hot and controversial topic during the last few years. Many gamers and even developers don't like the idea of players using a mouse and keyboard on console in multiplayer games, because you no longer have a level playing field then. But this video is not about if it is a good or a bad thing to be able to use a keyboard and a mouse on console. What I want to talk about is the effect that an input adapter like the Sim 4 has on the input lag, or in other words, the responsiveness of the game. Now, before we dive into the subject, I want to make clear that I did not get paid for this video, nor am I sponsored by Sim Technologies, and I also did not get the Sim 4 for free. I paid for it myself with the intention to give it to one of you guys after my tests are done, and a bit later I will tell you how you get a chance to win this device. Now, first of all, how does the Sim 4 work? First, you use an USB cable to connect your controller to the input adapter. Then you connect your mouse, and after that you connect your keyboard. And finally, you connect it to your Xbox or PlayStation. Now the input adapter receives the signals from the mouse and the keyboard, converts them to data like the controller sends, and passes that onto the console. So the game does not even know that there is a keyboard and the mouse attached, as the Sim 4 does this conversion. The question is now how much extra delay is added by that conversion process. But in this setup you are not limited to the keyboard and mouse, you can still use the controller, and it will be interesting to find out if running the controller through the input adapter affects its input delay. So that's the basic setup of the Sim 4. The next step is that you tell it which game you play. That you can do with the manager app, which is available for iOS and Android devices. Here you can download profiles for many different games, customize them and change the settings of the Sim 4. Now, how do I measure the input lag or the responsiveness of a game on console and PC? For that I use a high-speed camera, a gaming monitor and a gaming mouse, which has a LED connected directly to its left mouse button, which will turn on when I press it. The test setup for the controller is very similar, just that here I have the LED wired directly to the RB button, which means that I had to change the button mapping a bit inside of Overwatch to get the game to fire the gun when I press RB. Inside the high-speed footage I then look for the frame where I see that the LED turns on, and then I count the frames until I see the action triggered by that input, which allows me to calculate the delay between the button and the pixel. So let's have a look at the results then. Without the SIM 4 and the controller in wireless mode, I measured an average button to pixel delay of 93.67 milliseconds. Still without the SIM 4, but the controller connected to the console using an USB cable, I measured pretty much the same input delay as before, which means that using a USB cable instead of the wireless mode does not reduce the input delay. So if you have been using a USB cable until now thinking that it would reduce the input delay, you can simply stop doing that. Now, with the controller attached to the SIM 4, the average input delay increased to 100 milliseconds. So just having the input adapter between your controller and your console increases the average input lag by 7 milliseconds. But to be fair, I highly doubt that anyone can even notice the difference. Then something interesting happened when I did the same test with the G402 gaming mouse. The average input delay was a little bit lower compared to the results from the controller. But again, the difference is so small that no one will be able to notice it. So based on these results, the internal processing and signal conversion done by the SIM 4 causes an average input delay increase of about 7 milliseconds. However, as I said before, this delay increase is so small that I highly doubt that anyone will be able to notice the difference between a controller connected to the SIM 4 and a controller that is directly connected to the console. Now, before I tell you how you can enter the giveaway for the SIM 4 which I used for this test, I want to show you a few more results, this time from the PC. With the medium graphics preset at 1080p, a display refresh rate of 60Hz, the frame rate limited to 60fps, and with both VSync and G-Sync disabled, I measured an average button to pixel delay of 39.92 milliseconds. That's more than 50 milliseconds less than what I measured on the console. However, when I then enable VSync at the display refresh rate of 60Hz, then the average input delay increases to 94 milliseconds on PC as well. So that tells you why there is A, no tearing on console, and B, why the console has an input delay of 94 milliseconds. It's because of VSync and the 60Hz refresh rate. One more thing that I would like to mention is that you will only achieve these low input delays when you use a gaming monitor. 
If you play on the big screen in the living room, then the input delay will be a lot higher, even when you disable all the image processing features or switch to the game mode if your TV supports that. TVs are simply built for media consumption and not for gaming. This is why we have gaming monitors. Now, as I said, I will give away the SIM 4 that I used for this test, simply because I'm not much of a console gamer, and so I want to give it to one of you guys who actually uses it. I have put all the rules and entry requirements for this giveaway in the description down below. So just have a look and I wish you good luck. I hope that you enjoyed this input delay analysis of the XIM4 input adapter. And if you like this kind of content where I take a look at different technologies and show you how these affect your gaming experience, then you can help to cover the costs of this channel by supporting me on Patreon. Without the support of my patrons, this channel could not exist anymore. So if you want to support me as well, then you can find the link in the description down below. Also, if you want to stay up to date on what I'm currently working on, like the Destiny 2 netcode analysis, then you can follow me on Twitter or Facebook, the links are also in the description of this video. And if you don't want to miss the next one, then you might want to subscribe to my channel and click on that little bell icon below this video to receive a notification when I upload the next one. So if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.